Hello everyone. In this video tutorial, we will learn how we can detect different grocery items in our retail store. So we will train the Yolanas model on grocery items dataset. And after training the Yolanas model, we will test the model on random images and videos. And we will see whether we are able to detect different grocery products in a retail store or not. So I have already prepared a complete notebook for this project. So let's get started. So here is the complete Google Colab Notebook. The complete project is divided into multiple steps. We will go through each of the step one by one and then we will uh, test after training the Yolanas model on grocery items data set. We will test the model on images and videos and we will see what results do we get. So you can see the complete Google Colab Notebook in front of your screen. So in the first step, we will uh, just go over here and please make sure that you have selected the runtime as uh, or the hardware accelerator as GPU and GPU type you can be T4 and runtime is Python 3. Okay, so now you can see it's connecting. So that's look good. So in the first step, we will install all the required packages. So to do object detection using Yolanas, we require the super gradients package. Plus, as we will be downloading or exporting the data set from RoboFlow into the Google Colab Notebook. So I am just installing the RoboFlow package. Plus, uh, we require other two packages as well. I am utils and PyTube package as well. So let's first install these four packages. So super gradients, I am utils, RoboFlow, PyTube. So that's look good. So the package installation will take around 5 to 10 minutes. So let's see as this package gets installed, we will go ahead. So now you uh, so now you can see that the packages are installed. So I will just click on runtime and restart runtime for from here. So please make sure that after installing the packages, you will restart the runtime because if you don't restart the runtime and start importing the required libraries, it will give an error. So it's always important to restart the runtime after installing all the packages. So now I'm just importing the required libraries. I'm just importing the trainer library so that I can just instantiate the trainer. So whether I just want to use uh, or fine tune the Yolana small model on this grocery data set. So I will just instantiate the trainer. Plus I'm just defining the data loaders to load the data set. Plus uh, Yolana's pre-trained model has been trained on the Coco data set. So as we are just fine tuning the Yolanas model on grocery data set. So I'm just importing Coco data detection Yolo format train and Coco detection Yolo format validation as well. So now uh, to clear this output, uh, I'm just using from out iPython display clear output. Plus uh, we have different loss functions, but in this project we will be using a loss as PP Yolo E loss plus our uh, evaluation metrics will be mean average precision with IU 0.5. So I am just importing those packages into quite libraries as well. And to do uh, to load our best model, I am just importing the uh, models library. So after training or fine tuning the Yolanas model on grocery data set, and then to load the best model, I will be use using models library. Okay. So now uh, we are done with the step number one and step two. Step number one was to install the packages, and step two was to import all the required libraries. So we are done with the step one and step two. So that's look great. So let's move towards the step number three. Uh, the step number three is uh, to settings a checkpoint directory and experiment name. So now I will in this file section, I will be creating a folder by the name checkpoints and inside this folder uh, inside this directory. So in the file section, I will be creating a directory by the name checkpoints and inside this directory, I will have the folder by the name retail Yolanas run. So here a directory will be created by the name checkpoints and inside this directory we will have the folder by the name retail Yolanas run. You can change the name of the directory as well and you can change the name of the folder as well. So inside this folder we will have the best model weights, the model based on the last epoch and average model weights. Plus we will have all the log files data stored in this folder over here as well. Okay. So in the file section, a directory will be created by the name checkpoints and inside this directory we will have the folder retail Yolanas run and inside this folder we will have the best model weights, the model weights on the last epoch and the average model weights plus we will also have the logs file stored over here as well. 
so if i just go over here so before i export the data set from roboflow into the google core lab notebook let me just give you an overview of the data set as well so this is the data set which i have created for this project you can see over here uh, so we have uh, 856 images in the training set 96 images in the validation set and 111 images in the testing set so if i just go to the over here you can see that uh, we have around 27 different classes in our data set and here are the training images all over you can see plus if i just go to the health check so now you can see over here we have 1063 images in total we have 3920 annotation in total and the median ratio is 608 cross 608 plus you can see here we have uh, 27 different classes and these all till now here you can see the class are overrepresented while this is the balanced class in green you can see while these are the underrepresented so please try to make sure that your data set is balanced so it is always good okay but yeah uh, so if you just i will share the data set with you so if you just want to add uh, further images and do the annotation you can just click on upload more images and upload more images and annotate them and add this those images into your data set as well okay so if you just want to generate this data set you can just go over here so you can see that uh, we have 163 images in total 27 classes we have 856 images in that training set 96 images in the validation set and 111 images in that testing set so okay so we are just resizing the image to 640 cross 640 because Yolanda's model is being pre-trained on the Coco data set and while uh, when we pre-trained uh, or when they have pre-trained the Yolanda's model on the Coco data set they have set the image size to 640 cross 640 okay so we are just resizing uh, the image to 640 cross 640 because when we fine-tune the Yolanda's model on uh, any other data set we just want to keep the image size same because if we just change the image size or increase the image size or less the image size then the accuracy might get compromised okay so if you don't have enough images in your training data you can always do augmentation you can uh, do augmentation you can just increase the size of the training data using augmentation so augmentation is a technique that helps us to increase the size of our training data so i don't need the augmentation over here and then you can just click on generate so it will convert the data set into the required format uh, coco format so that you can export the data set from roboflow into the google core lab notebook i have already generated one so i will just click on export data set and just like the you will have a pytorch format from here and then i will just copy this code so if you are using a uh, google core lab notebook or jupyter no and upon the jupyter notebook you can just copy this code from here and paste it into any of the cell it will download the code from roboflow into the uh, notebook but if you are using any other id you can just copy this code from here and paste this code into your terminal like pycharm id spider id or any other id you can just copy this code from here and paste this code in the terminal but if you are using notebook so you can just copy this code from here and just add this notebook in any of your cell uh, and add this code in any of your cell and you will be able to download the data set from roboflow into your notebook so let me just copy this code from here Okay, and now i am just downloading the test data set which i have shown you restrict store data set from roboflow into your my google colab notebook so now you can see over here i have downloaded the data set so you can see that we have train test validation folder and we here we have the data.yml file so you can see here we have 20 uh, number of classes and c represents the number of classes we have 27 different classes and this is the link of the data set and these are the train validation and test images folder paths okay so here are the 27 different classes in our data set okay and you can see over here if i just open to data uh, yml file okay okay so you can see over here we have uh, in if you just open the test images you can see that we have images in the image folder plus for each image we have the labels in the labels for a .txt file so you can see that here we have all the images and for each image in the labels folder we have the .txt file which tell us the bounding box coordinates and the class so this represents the class number and these represents the bounding box coordinates okay so that's so good 
So if I just go over here in the data set parameters, you can see over here, I've just defined the data set directory. So you can just copy path from here and just add this path over here and you can define a data set directory. And then you can see over here, I have defined a train images directory, train labels directory, validation images directory, validation labels directory, test images directory and test labels directory. And you can see over here, I have written all the class names. So you can see over here, uh, the first class is apple so i've written apple so you just need to follow the same sequence provided over here by writing uh, when writing the class's name over here so just follow the same sequence which is provided over here you can see apples banana bun cabbage cold drink so in the same sequence you will write the class name over here as well okay so the same sequence which is provided over here to write down the class name you will just write the class names in the same sequence over here as well like the apples come first, then banana, then bun, then cabbage, then cold ring, and then dry fruit. And in the last, we have tomato. So you can see in the last, we have tomato as well. So just follow the same sequence provided over here to write down the class names over here as well. So now I will just pass this data set parameters argument over here as well. And here you can see I've just defined the batch size and number of workers. So what does batch size mean? Uh, like batch size represent how many in, how many chunks you want to just pass this data set. So uh, batch size uh, is always in the power of two. Okay, so uh, like uh, it's always in the power of two. So it can be four, eight, eight, 16, 32. Okay, please remember don't set the don't set the batch size value above 32. It is completely unrealistic. Plus, please don't set the value of batch size to four because it will so much increase that training time it will increase the training time very much so please set the batch size value from 8 16 so 8 or 16 is a good value so you can uh, set these values plus we don't be unrealistic and don't set the batch size value above 32 it will just crash your uh, like if you are using google collab notebook it will definitely crash if i just set the batch size value above 32 so always set the nominal value from 16 8 or 8 okay and please don't set the batch size value of below or eight like four because it will increase the training time very much okay you can set the batch size value four if you have very much large size in the training data set so if your data set consists of ten thousands images so you can then set the batch size value four but if you have three thousand four hundred thousand images in the data set you don't need to set the batch size value like uh, four then okay so best is just representing how many iterations we will be passing over the data set to the model. Okay, so now let's inspect the data set which I have defined earlier. Okay, so now I will just plot the batch of the training data to see how our training data looks like. So this might take few seconds uh, before it gets ready. So here you can see I'm just plotting a batch of the training data. So you can see that we have bounding boxes around different detected vegetables, fruits. So the data set looks good. Okay, so now uh, in you instant, I'm just instantiating the model. Ulanas comes with three different models: Ulanas small, Ulanas medium, Ulanas large. Ulanas small is uh, fastest, but it is less accurate. While Ulanas large is the most accurate among other Ulanas models, but it is less fast. So in this project, I'm using Ulanas small model, and the pre-trained weights are Coco and data set parameters class C. So if I just see over here. Uh, in the data set parameters in the classes we have 27 different classes in our data set so if i just last pass the length of this classes so it will turn out to be 27 okay so you can see that length data set parameters classes so it will be 27 the number of classes will be 27 and i'm just fine tuning or training a you know, a small model to detect different grocery items in a retail store okay so you can use any other other models as well you can use Uranus medium Uranus large models as well so now i will just define the training met uh, uh, metrics and the training parameters so before you start the training there are must few mandatory arguments that you must define before you start that training process the mandatory arguments include maximum number of epochs the loss function the optimizer, the train matrix list, and matrix to watch. So maximum number of epochs represents like how many number of epochs you want to train your data set. So 
This is the first mandatory argument that you must define before you start the training, like on how many epochs you want to train uh, your modular NAS model. Then we have the uh, loss function. So you just need to define what loss function you are using in this project. So as I told you, I will be using PP YOLO E loss. Then we must need to define the optimizer, whether we are using Adam optimizer, RMS prop or STD optimizer. Then we need to define the train matrix list, validation matrix list and matrix to watch. So the metrics to watch is built in this project will be considered as mean average precision with RU 0.5. So these are the four men, six mandatory arguments that you must define before you start the training. You can define other arguments as well, but these are the mandatory arguments that must be refined before the training starts, which include maximum number of epochs, the loss function, optimizer, strain matrix, validation matrix list, and metrics to watch. Okay, so here you can see that I have defined the training parameters over here. Optimizer is defined as Adam. And if I just say maximum number of epochs are defined as 15. The loss function is PP YOLO E loss. And here we have the train matrix list, validation matrix list, and the matrix to watch is considered as mean average precision zero with IU 0 0.5. Plus you can see I have also defined the initial learning rate, learning mode, and other parameters as well. But these are the six mandatory arguments that you must define before starting the training. So I will download some demo videos from the Google Drive after training the Yolanas small uh, model on grocery items data set. We will test our models on multiple videos. So I've just don't get, got these videos from different resources and just uploaded those videos from my into my drive. So I'm directly downloading those videos from the drive into this Google Colab notebook. So now, uh, after training the Yolanas model on Roxy items data set, I will be just testing the my mod train model on these demo videos, which you can see I'm downloading over here. So after training Yolanas model on Roxy items data set, I will be testing uh, the Yolanas model on these videos. You can take other videos as well. Plus you can also test on random images as well. So it's all upon your choice. So now uh, I will just start the training over here. So till now we have instantiated the train, uh, trainer. We have defined the data set parameters and data set loaders. We have instantiated the model. So we are just using Yolana small model or just we are just fine tuning the Yolana small model on retail store data set. And I have defined the training parameters as well. I've shown you that there are six mandatory arguments so which I have defined earlier. So now we will just start the training. So the training will take around, um, you can say that, around one hour or one hour 30 minutes so as the training completes i will be back and then we will discuss the results so now you can see that i have trained the yolanas model on first uh, retail store data set you can see that i have trained or fine-tuned the yolanas small model on a grocery data set in uh, so here you can see uh, if i just go to the checkpoints directory and in the retail Yolanas run, uh, you can see in this folder, I have the best model weights, the average model weights, the model based on the last epochs, and these are the log files. So uh, this looks good. Uh, here you can see the model, best model weights uh, on the specific epoch on which the model skips. Uh, best mean average precision score, it represents the best model weights. And then we have the average model weights and the model weights on the last epoch. So if we are training Yolanas small model or fine tuning the Yolanas small model on any custom data set, so if we are just fine tuning it for maximum number of 15 epochs so these are the model weights on the 15th epoch okay so after just training the yolanas uh, model or fine tuning the yolanas model on grocery data set i have just pay, added the model weights into my drive so you can see that these are the weights i've just downloaded those weights and added those weights onto my google drive so i will directly download those weights from drive into this google colab notebook the reason for placing those weights into my drive because I can just copy path and add it over here as well. But I've just added into drive and now I'm downloading those weights from drive into the Google Colab notebook. So if in any case my runtime crashes, so uh, if I just don't save the model weights, they will be lost. Okay, so I just save the model weights into my drive. So if any uh, if for if any reason the runtime crashes or I re -time, run time restarts, my model weights are not lost. So it's always better to save the model weights into your drive and download those weights from drive directly into the OLAP notebook.
Okay, so let me just see what is the error occurring over here. Okay. It's a working fine. I don't know what is the UTS-8 issue previously appearing, but now it's working fine. So now you can see over here, I have downloaded the model weights from the drive into my Google Colab notebook, which you can see over here. So I will just click on copy path from here and just add this path over here. So I will just control V and uh, I have 27 different classes in my data set. So the length will be 27. Okay, so here you can see that I've just defined the best train model weights over here. So now I will be just evaluating the best train model on the test data set. So let's see what uh, mean average precision, what F1 score, what recall we get over here. So you can see that the mean average precision with IAU 0.5 is obtained at 64.70% and the uh, recall score is obtained as 88.94 percent and the f1 score is obtained as 8.08 percent so or 0 0.08 so it's all looks good so now i will be just taking a sample image over from here and just adding the image path over here and let's see whether we are able to detect different glossy items in that image or not I will just go to the validation folder from here and then click on images and just copy path from here and just add this path over here. Okay, so let's test. Uh, let's see whether we are able to like different. Uh, okay, so you can see here we have different onions. So you can see that we have detected all the onions and the results look very good. So that's very awesome. You can test on other images as well and share the results as well. Plus, you can see that uh, before tra starting the training, I have downloaded three demo videos. So now I will be just testing our uh, trained or fine-tuned your NAS model on grocery items on these demo videos. And let's see whether we are able to take different vegetables, different food items or different snacks in these videos or not. So let's just copy path over here and let's do the detection on these videos and let's see how our results look like. So here uh, I have just passed up my input video path over here and you can see that our output video path is in the output video path I just want to write the name. So here you can see that I have written detection stat output one. So my output video will be saved by the name detection stat output one. You can just change any name from here like output one, like output two, output three. So but uh, whatever name you write over here, your output video will be saved by that name. Okay. So after defining the input video path and output video path, so as we are using GPU, uh, Google Colab offers free GPU, so you can just use it, but it is for some limited time, but if you have Google Colab Pro, so it offers unlimited GPU, but it is a paid. So, so now I will be detecting, uh, doing the detection on this video. So the complete video will be divided into several frames and the detection on each of the frame will be done one by one and then we'll have the final output video. So you can see that the complete video is being divided into 302 frames and the detection on each of the frame is done one by one. So this will take some time. So after completing the reaction, I will display the output video over here. So let me just show you. So I have already displayed the output video over here. If I just start again, it will take some time, but you can just check it on your side as well. So as you can see, the screen size is very small. So let me just download this output video and let me show you what results do we get. So let me just navigate my screen towards the output video. So you can see over here, if I just started from scratch, so you can see that we are able to take pineapple, apples, water bottles, bun as well. So the detection results look good, like you can see. So let's test on some other video and let's see what uh, results we get. So this is a second video. So I've downloaded three videos. So, so you can see that output video will be saved by the name detections2.mp4 and you can just copy path from here and add this path over here as well. Okay. So, 
let's do the detection on this video so we will divide the complete video into several frames and we will do the detection on each of the frame one by one so the complete video is divided into 337 frames and detection on each of the frame is done one by one so yes it's now done and i'm already displayed the output video uh, below over here so let me just complete so let me just show you what output do we get over here so this might take few more seconds uh, before it is ready so so this is output video let me just download it because of the small screen size i might not be able to show you the results over here very clearly so let me just navigate my screen towards the output video so you can see over here we are able to detect apples water bottles vegetables as well bun we are also able to detect the buns as well so the results look good so let's test on demo video 3 and you can see that this is the demo video 3 path which i have added over here so and our output video will be saved by the name detection 3.mp4 so let's do the detection on this video so we will divide the complete video into uh, several frames and we will do the detection on each of the frame one by one so the complete video is divided into 339 frames and detection on each of the frame will be done one by one so it so it is quite fast like you can see that the uh, prediction on the video is done very rapidly it doesn't take very much time so you can see that here we have the first output video saved then we have the second output video saved and here we will also have the third output video you can see over here saved over here as well so that's impressive so let me just show i have already displayed the output video so let me just download this video and show you what results do we get So now here you can see that we are able to detect bread, green seeds, vegetables, snacks, oil as well. So reduction results look very good, awesome. So that's all from this video tutorial. I hope you have learned something from this video tutorial. See you all in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.